three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on introduction to classes. So at this point, we've done kind of a lot of programming in Python and some JavaScript. And we've done arrays and we've done for loops and we're just kind of getting into the real fun part of programming, which is about as much as I know. <laughs> so anyways, if you want to learn how to build some video games and stuff like that, it's time to start thinking about objects, okay? So once you start programming even simple games that what you would think are simple, like Pong and stuff, you have to start thinking about each object that's in the game and how it interacts with each other. So typically to use um, objects in, well, Java, but in processing, which is a Java-based program, you're going to use classes. So how do you do that in processing? So it's really, really cool, actually. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my setup. So let me just go ahead and set it up for you guys. So I'll do a void setup. And I'll just um, do size. I'll stick with the 600 by 600 default. And we'll leave some space for the rest of the setup, which I haven't got to yet. And let's just go to a red background. So we'll go ahead and make the background kind of a dark shade of red remember color is RGB so hmm, there's actually a fourth parameter for opacity but doesn't really matter for the background but um, okay so there you go so there is um, my sketch and what I want to do is I want to start adding objects so in the previous tutorial when I did loops and arrays we use an array to build tons of walls and had them all moving across the screen which is really cool okay well what's cooler than using an array well you'll use an array with this later we'll see but is to create an object and let that be a ball and then just tell the computer put a ball on this screen and let it go around okay so how do we do that so you see this tab right here that's kind of like located at the top if you click on that it actually will open up a new file so it's very similar to um like in Microsoft Excel or Sheets, you can do a new tab. It's kind of the same thing, but it is actually its own file. So let's go ahead and name the file ball, since that's what we're going to create. We'll do it with a capital B. Okay, typically classes are capitalized. And then what you do is you and you you define the class. So you type class ball, and you don't put parentheses. So this isn't a method, so there aren't any parentheses. But you do put a brace because this is a huge block of code. Okay. Um, and so what goes inside of the code that we need? There's three main ideas that you do with all classes. And this is for all languages that you'll do. There's going to be um, the first thing, which is your variables. Sometimes they're called fields. I guess I'll write that. And then the next part will be your um, constructor. So the constructor is when you create a new object of this type, what does it actually do? And the third thing are going to be the methods. So these are things that the object knows how to do. So for example, in Code HS, we had Carol the dog, and Carol knew how to turn left because that object knew that command that the, that the people who programmed Carol to do knew that. Okay, so you can add as many methods as you want. So for our ball, if you think about it, what do we want to have for our variables? So we're going to have a float x. We're going to have a float y, and we're going to have a float diameter for now. We're going to add later, okay? but for now, we'll just start with the basics. okay? And to write the constructor, um, what you do is you just write the name of the class. So since this class is capital B-A-L-L, -L, you write that, but with the parentheses. Now, unlike the other functions and methods we've used in the past, you don't have to declare what the return type is. So for the constructor, there is no return type, okay? So no return type. Normally, you always write for a method. It is a method. The constructor is a method, but you don't have to write void or int or whatever. So it's going to just be the method name, which has to be the same as the... So if I change this, even with a lowercase b, you'll see what it says. It says return type missing. See, so it expects a return type. But when I do it correctly, the name of the class, it's not asking for that. Now it's just saying missing your curly brackets. And now it's not mad at all. You see? 
So this is basically how it would construct a ball. So what we can do is we can say, you know, set x equal to um, some random number between zero and let's say the width. Let's just give it the whole width of the screen and y will do the same thing and we'll let it be the height of the screen. Okay, so we're gonna let the, oh, and the diameter, let's see, what do we want the diameter to be? Let's just set it to 30 for now and then later on we'll change it, okay? So we've got three variables. Notice in this one, you're wondering why, why did I do this? Well, this is just declaring the variables that I wanna use, okay? And you do not actually have to assign values to them in the constructor. If you don't assign them, they'll just be a default of zero unless they get assigned later on. So I'm just doing that to make this ball the size I want it, but you don't have to do that. And then let's write, um, let's just write one method right now. We'll just say, void display so this will show the ball and we'll just draw a circle at the coordinates x y and the size will be diameter okay all right and one day i'll learn how to spell circle all right so now if i come over here what i can do now is i can create a ball by typing the class name so instead of typing int x or something i type ball the class name and i'll just call it ball 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 so lowercase so actually this could be anything so I can just write anything I want so I can name it anything here I don't want you to get confused so then what I have to do is I have to initialize it with a new instance of that ball then it will go to the constructor of that class ball and it will go through all those parameters so it'll do the X and the Y and the diameter which we've already done and then now that I have the object defined I can tell that object anything or the name that I gave it dot display I can call that method and it will actually run through that code because every object in that class knows how to do that okay so that is how we would do it and you could create as many balls as you want you would just tell them that hey I want to create a ball and I want it to be this thing okay so what can we do with this so why is this better well first of all look how small our code is first of all it says it's a ball and then it creates a ball and then it displays the ball. I think this code is pretty easy to understand. Like someone who's never coded before could probably understand this. Okay, so, but what's really cool is now that we know about arrays, watch what happens if I do, and let me change the name of this. I'm gonna say ball, ball. So ball array, remember an array is going to be an empty set of spaces, okay? And since it doesn't have a size yet, it's just a infinitely large array until I tell it how big it's going to be in this line right here. So let's say ball equals new ball array and we'll do 10 balls just to start. Okay. Now the difference here is that this objects haven't actually been created. So this right here is an array. Remember that's what this two brackets mean. Meaning I've only given it a space. I have not put actual balls in those spaces. So just like I drew up here now this is 10, um, 10 spaces, so zero to nine, but there aren't any balls in there. So to do that, I have to create a new ball for each one. Remember, the balls are gonna be randomly created. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use the for loop just like I did with the last tutorial. So int i equals zero. i is less than, um, we'll just do the ball dot length. And then we'll do i plus plus. And if you're one of my students, I'd like you to try to fill out the next line of code on your own. We'll first correct this. What, how would you create a new ball? So this is how, hopefully you paused it, but probably not, oh, <laughs> ball dot link. Ball, dot, ball i equals new ball. Yeah, so that was definitely not how I do it. All right, so that will actually create a new ball into and put it into all of the spaces. And this right here is going to be the same as this number right there. So that's what <coughs> that line of code does. And now in the display system, instead of doing that ball that I just did, I got rid of, I'm gonna paste this um, for loop just to save time. And I'm just gonna tell it, I'm just gonna replace the ending with the, hey, I want you to go through that whole array and all of them, I want you to display all of them. And so let's go ahead and play that. Yay, so it works. And since they're random, every time I run the program, they'll be in a different spot. 
and you can kind of see how this would go. I could make a, a million of these, and this isn't all that great. In fact, it's not even as cool as the last video, but I haven't done anything. See, now that I've created the balls, I can also tell them, I can add to the display. So I can go into the ball class, and I can say, you know what I want you to do? Before you display, I want you to update your position. And then that's a method that's inside of here that I haven't written yet. So I'll write it void update. This is really up to you. You could have just written all of this in one chunk of code, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say X. Um, so you know what? Actually, I'm going to use the velocity X's and velocity Y's. So I'm going to go have and create those in a second. And what I'll do is I'll do if, I'll also check to see if it's on the, the edges. I'll say if X is greater than width or X is less than zero. I'm going to take the velocity in the x direction and multiply it by negative 1. Okay? And I'll also do that for the y. So it'll be the exact same code but with y and it'll be height instead of width. And or y is less than 0. And we'll set vy negative 1. Okay? So, of course, it's mad at me because it doesn't have a VX and VY. So, what we'll do is we'll do float VX, float VY. And if I leave those at zero, it won't do anything. So, let's give them a value. Let's do VX equals some random number. And we'll do from negative 5 to 5. And VY will equal some random number. And it will be from negative 5 to 5. Now, what, remember, I'm not... I'm creating, they're all going to have their own VXs and own VYs. Each object has its own list of these variables. So that's the biggest problem. When you start having lots of objects, the point of putting them into classes is not just so you can put that code somewhere else in a separate file. It's so that each of these variables is unique to that person, so that object. So I have an X and a Y and a diameter and a velocity and, and so do you and so does everyone else and so we don't have to create 50 different variables for 10 people we can just do five variables and attach them to each of the persons that's what the objects are I don't know if that really made sense or not but um, hopefully it did so let's look at some more fun stuff we can do um, so now that we've got this working well the obvious fun part is just to like add a zero so instead of having 10 balls on the screen now we have a hundred so it gets really fun and of course the kids will put in lots of zeros and it'll be filled with zeros but trust me you can put as many zeros as you want eventually you'll just have a bunch of white everywhere so go ahead and play with that all you want to but what I want to do is I want to talk about some other stuff which is like how I could maybe change the these are kind of boring they're all white and they're they're, they're behaving properly but I would rather them be kind of different colors and stuff like that so I want to show you something you can do. So one thing you can do is, um, well, let's just go ahead and change the colors. And oops, I used a capital F. It actually doesn't matter in this language, but it's a bad habit. So I'm going to do R, G, B, and O for opacity. Okay. So if you don't know that, the O is how see-through it is, and zero is like clear, and 255 is full color so you can add that color so that's it we can have those and what I can do is um, well let's just say in display if I wanted to if I did um, fill for the color of the circle if I did fill like um, RGB um, and O if I did that right now and just left those as zeros well then they'd all be black circles and they'd all be <laughs> No, there's no opacity so it's only showing the outline of them okay but what I can do is in the constructor I can make each of these a, a um, random number between 0 and 255 and if you go through all of these ah, I promise I have a point to all of this not just to make colors but to show you a pretty cool trick about well not a trick but something you need to know about objects besides so if I do that now it'll make a random color for each object so that's cool and they're all a little different um, thing I could even do it with a diameter so now that I look at this uh, 
I instead of making the diameter 30, let's do random 10 plus 30, or let's make it 20. So it'll be, they'll all be like a little bit different sizes. Okay, now we're starting to have more fun. So now it's starting to look a little cooler, maybe getting some more likes on my videos. People are starting to think maybe, even though he's a high school teacher, he's not completely dumb. So yeah, this is actually looking pretty cool. So what should I do next? So what I want to show you now is how to have more than one type of constructor. So, so remember this right here is the magic key. This is the constructor, the method ball. However, what if I wanted to have a specific ball? Like I want to have just, instead of random colors, let's say I wanted those colors to be blue and red. Like one of my students, David, has this game where you try to get the blue circles but not the reds and stuff like that. So let's see, how could I do that? So if I did, let's just copy this whole thing. So let's take this whole constructor and we're going to create it in this same section. We're going to create another constructor. But this one's going to take a parameter, we're going to call it an integer, and we're going to we'll just call it num. Okay, we'll just call it the num. And if, instead of doing random variables for all of these colors, we'll do um, if um, num is divisible by 2, so the way you write that is if num modulus 2, if the remainder when dividing by 2 is equal to 0, what we'll do is we'll make it red. How's that? So we'll do r equals 255. Okay. And else, since everything else will be zero, I don't need to write anything else. Else, we'll do, we'll say blue is equal to 255. Okay. And so you're thinking, well, that's not really going to work. Yeah, it's not because when I did this right here where I created the new balls, I didn't pass any variables in here. So what I'm saying is, if I don't pass a variable, then it will do this constructor. But if I pass an integer, it'll go through and check that number against here. So for example, if I put the number two in here, since two is divisible by two, now instead of creating random colors, uh-oh, what happened? Um, RGB, R was two, five, oh, the opacity is, um, so let's do this. Let's also set, so outside the loop, let's just set O equal to some random 255. Or do we want to make it at random? Let's just make them, let's make them solid. Let's make them uh, 255. We'll just make a full color. So now, da, 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 it's not working. Hello, play. It's confused. There we go. Now they're all solid red. And if I do it the other way, if I make it like, three, not divisible by two, then they'll all be blue. That looks kind of hurts my eyes a little bit. <laughs> okay, but what's even cooler, let's not make them fully, okay, let's make them a little bit not so bright. Let's see if this looks better. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I like that. So anyways, if I wanted to do half and half, what I could do is I could, instead of passing in a solid number, you know how we have this I variable that's counting? I could do, um, I could put in I instead. So then the first one will be red, the second one will be blue, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just go back. So half of them will be red and half of them will be blue. Okay. So anyway, that's kind of a lot, but you kind of get the idea. You can see like how all these objects are interacting with each other. Or well, actually, no, that's the next part. Right now, they're all kind of um, interacting with just the walls. But that's the next thing is how are we going to make these balls bounce off each other and that's actually a pretty difficult process but it's not so easy if you just narrow it down so anyways i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed classes look at the code that's all it is it's just two lines of code but the class ball is all written right here so i'll post this up into the description uh, don't forget to like subscribe and any comments you have i'd be really appreciative because i'm trying to do a better job all right thanks for watching